we've got a game downstairs which is can you fix the broken build right so if you're interested head on down and uh, and have a crack <laughs> we've also got comics Bruce and Abdul they're the two senior managers at our Bangalore office at Aconex that's Bruce there hello Bruce and Lakshmi is with Bruce they're people at our Aconex office I'm based in Melbourne but we've got these cool little comic books which are neat would you like one yeah cool there's something like that in your show bags that come with the conference I'm just gonna hand a few out but if you come downstairs, we'll give you more. We've got stacks, boxes of them. Here you go, a little taster. You wanna <coughs> Have we started yet? Is the clock on? Cheers. <coughs> I'd like to, hey, I'm on. <laughs> Excellent. <coughs> First of all, I'd like to say uh, I've been having a really good time in this room today. There's been a track of really excellent talks in here so far today. So um, if any of the people in here are speakers, then thank you for the interesting talks that you've given. Um, secondly, I'm going to talk a little bit, but I'm going to get you to do most of the work. Um, my core competency is delegating things to other people. <laughs> now when you come to a conference like this, you hear a lot of stories, you learn some stuff, you get inspired, and then what do you do when you go back to work on Monday? What do you change? <laughs> Say it louder. I don't forget it. Switch off the mobile. <laughs> you remember to switch off the mobile. What do you change at work? Not much, right? So you're either already a change agent, you're already committed to doing work smarter and better ways, and you're already out there fighting the good fight, or you're in an environment that doesn't really let you, you know, shift things much, and it takes a lot of effort to change the way the organization around you works. Can I get a little show of hands? Who here has already been in talks all about change management and changing organizational behaviors? Or is this your first one for the day? Yeah, so for most of you, it's, uh, okay, it's a newish topic today. Um, so. What stops us from making change? The, you know, you guys are all literate in the idea of systems thinking and the Deming quote about people come to work wanting to do a good, wo uh, do a good day's job. You're, you're nod, you with me? Can you hear that? Yeah, you're, you're familiar with the idea? You are, aren't you? Yeah, what stops people from doing a good job? I told you, you guys were gonna do most of the work. Yeah, go on, shout it out. The organization, the way the organization is set up and the systems of the organization are the things that get in our way. Would you say that's a fair statement? You disagree. No one's nodding, no one's yesing, knowing, no one's even giving me the famous Indian, I'm not sure. <laughs> it depends, thank you. You've got a consultant in the room. <laughs> thank you very much. Right. So I thought what I might do today is share a technique, a little technique, um, around how to inspire and enlist people in getting change done, all right? So this technique is just little human interaction stuff, right? Something that you can do with the people that you work with day to day and something that'll help you shift the way the system is so that maybe you can be a bit more effective, maybe you can be a bit more you know, efficient in the way you get things done. So, you know, um, what am I gonna do? Well, I've already told you that you're gonna do most of the work, so I'm gonna give you some instructions and I'm gonna put the clock on my phone and I'm going to time some conversations, right? What I, what I will do at the end is I will loop, loop back to the beginning and I, I'm going to ask you guys to debrief and share some expressions, uh, some, some lessons that you've pulled out of the conversations, all right? So here's what we're going to do, right? All in all, if this goes smoothly, it'll take 50 minutes, right? If anything happens, like there's a blackout or an earthquake or somebody naked runs into the room, it might take a little longer, all right? But we'll, we'll get it done in an hour. So what I'm gonna do is ask you, to guys, ask you guys to go through three different conversations with each other, all right? And at the end of those, we're gonna have a little moment of reflection. But it looks like there's, I don't know, 80 people in the room or thereabouts, so I'm not gonna ask you all to reflect back to me because that'll take too long. What I'll ask you to do is reflect back to the groups that you're in, all right? And then at the end, we'll just try to pull out a couple of key lessons. 
You with me? Does anyone want to go? You're all sticking around? Yeah. All right, cool. I apologize in advance. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. So, what I'm going to do, there's going to be three rounds, right? And I'm going to make the conversations increasingly more difficult as you go through each one. And at the end of each round, I'm going to ask you to reflect in the group you're in about what happened that made it more difficult. All right? That's all I'm going to ask you to talk about. And at the end, we'll collect some, you know, some meta information about it. The first conversation I'm going to ask you to start in just a moment, and it's going to go for five minutes. The second conversation I'm going to ask you guys to have is going to go for about eight minutes. And the reason for that is it's going to be a bigger group. And the third conversation will probably go for around 12 minutes, and again, it's going to be a bigger group, thus it's you know, bigger. Now, not everyone has to talk in each of these conversations, but in some of them, it'll be awkward if you don't, especially this first one. Could you please pair up with someone? And if you're at a table that's got an odd number of people, find someone at a different table to work with. Yep, just, just be clear about who you partnered up with. And at the end of this, at the end of this little pairing session, be a threesome. That's okay. All right. Is anyone here in a threesome now? Right. So it's mostly pairs. Cool. Good. All right. So the first conversation I would like you guys to have is a really straightforward one. What I would like you to do, and I'm going to put my clock on in just one second, is you've got five minutes. That means five minutes for both people to talk. I want you to share a story about where you've seen someone at work do something really good and what you liked about it. Does that sound like you can do it? You've been at work, you've seen somebody else at work, they've done something really good, you're impressed and you're going to share that story. Yeah? Because let, let's, let's be inspired by the good things that we've seen at work. Right? Cool. Take the minute. Take the five minutes and off you go. Clock has started. snuck up the back of the room, haven't I? Where will he be next? So, all right, so we'll call that done. And, uh, yeah, everyone can hear me? The microphone's working? I'm just holding it like an old school mic. The, uh, how was that? It's nice to actually chat to each other instead of get talked at all day long, isn't it? There's a couple of other things that are going on in there, and I'm not going to ask you to kind of reflect just yet. I'll just share some observations that I have from that activity. First of all, how often when we go to work do we have genuinely interesting conversations about the good stuff going on around us? All the time? Never? How about hands up if it's all the time? Yeah, that's cool. Oh, because you work with me, Lakshmi. <laughs> Bashka. The people who work with me, they're like, yeah. How about occasionally? In the retrospectives, maybe you know, during the week. Yeah, that's cool, that's nice. right? That's because you're a good, smart, agile crowd, right? Um, the next one is like storytelling. Like We can pull lessons out of that. As you were listening to the other person, again, show of hands, uh, did you get any ideas that you could maybe take or use in your own world? Yeah? Isn't it nice? Like, you know, when we listen to the good things going on around us, there's good things there right in front of us to take and use. Yeah. Hey, how you doing? Don't worry about me. I'm at the back of the room. The guy up the front's in charge. <laughs> cool. All right, so I want to do a second round, right? And this time what I'd like you to do is the pairs and the occasional threes that are in the room, I'd like you to turn to a group next to you, and this time you're going to be a group of four. Make sense? Look around, figure out who it's going to be, and when I go to the front of the room, what I'm going to do, as I walk to the front of the room, that's your team setup moment, right? When I get to the front of the room, I'm going to put the clock on for eight minutes, yeah? And then what I'd like you to talk about this time, sorry, what I'd like you to talk about this time, this time, is a time when I was at work and I saw someone else screw up and the lesson I took from it, yeah? So when I've seen somebody make a dumb mistake or a big mistake at work, a medium mistake, a little mistake, whatever, 
but the lesson I took away from it, okay? And I'd like you to do that in groups of four or five this time around. And for those of you that have just turned up in the room, just attach yourself to a group, all right? Cool. And off you go. I'll be at the, set your rooms up. I'll put the clock on when I get to the front. All right. Just a few more minutes. Just a few more minutes. Hang on, hang on. We'll wind up now. How's the microphone? Am I doing the microphone wrong? Can you hear me? But if I hold it here, is it okay? It's too quiet. It needs to be closer. Okay, everyone. Shut up. All right, shut up. Hello. I need a hand mic. Okay. So this time, I would like some reflections. Uh, and I would probably like to collect about four comments from the room. And what I'd like you to do, you might have to stand up and shout so everyone in the room can hear you. And I might repeat, like summarize and repeat at the end. But uh, what did you get out of that conversation? How about I'll do zones of the room? So one of these four tables, come on. Somebody's got to go first. Thank you. Hang on. I'll, I'll come to you next. Uh, hi, I'm Amit here. So one of the key learnings uh, for from this group was that uh, we had one team member uh, who had uh, committed to certain stories without checking with his dependent team member. And it was delivered as a commitment to the customer. So they had a lot of issues because of that. That was one of the uh, lessons. The second one was uh, uh, we had one of the team members here uh, uh, who had a organization structure that was not aligned to the contract and the way the team was structured. They were structured around component teams instead of epic teams. So that actually led to a lot of issues. So that was another, another learning. And uh, lesson. Uh, a lesson is uh, okay. lesson is you should not have uh, component teams. You should have feature teams. So that's it. Thanks very much for that. My lesson is I'm going to hold the microphone. Not that you went long. That was good. That was good. Often when you do things like these, people want to tell you their life story. Did anyone else want to share a story? Yeah? Okay, let's go. Not, not going to share a story. Just the thing which stood out for me for this group was that we're human and we make mistakes. Yeah. And we need to understand that everyone's like that, no matter how much experience you've got. Cool. Thank you. Sharing the lesson. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, I'll come to you. All right, hang on. And I'm after one more story after this, so whoever waves their arm frantically next is going to get it, but go for it. Uh, the thing that we learned was we uh, got to be a very good team player, work as a team, yep. and we would succeed. I think there was some disconnect within the teams. So. Right, cool. Thank you. Last one. You'll do. You're right here. I'm slipping through. You're going to shout? I'm summarizing. So what we're trying to look at, what I could gather out of these three people talk is take a few steps back before analyzing, before jumping into any conclusion. All three unanimously had a similar kind of a issue that they learned to take it a little slow, try to first understand the problem, then jumping into doing something. So I think many of us do that mistake on a daily basis to seeing an email immediately jumping into a conclusion rather than taking two steps away, not replying, reply all immediately. You know, that's the whole point that we're trying to talk about. Cool. Thank you very much. Has anyone done a reply all recently? <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Excuse me. Just slipping through. Let me just dash back to the front of the room, read my instruction manual, and figure out what's going to... Hey, hang on. I probably don't even need to tell you what's going to happen next, do I? You know. Can you figure it out? Uh, sorry? Exactly. A group of eight, right? Now, this is the last one, all right? I'm not going to make you 16 and then 32 and, and then 64, right? So, group of eight. And this time, I'll put the clock on for 12 minutes just to allow more talking. I know you've got to watch the time as, as the groups get bigger because that guy always talks too much, all right? So, um, usually it's me. Excuse me with the microphone. This time, this time I'm giving you a new topic. Does anyone want to leave yet? You're okay? Notice I asked before I nominate the topic. All right, so this time what I'd like you guys to do 
is to talk about a time where you really screwed up, probably at work, but potentially anywhere, and the special circumstances are such that you felt really embarrassed. Yeah? So I need you to talk authentically with your teammates about a time where you did something that made you feel embarrassed. Be brave. It's just eight people that you're talking to. <laughs> they're, they're recording it, but they're recording me, not you, okay? Now, now that we're at eight, you might have to kind of get up out of your chair and move to another table. So let's go. you're all going to be hypnotized. <laughs> Did that work? No. Nah. <laughs> hey, thanks very much. So, I'm going to do the same thing, shoot for a couple of bits of commentary from the audience. Give me a, an arm wave, someone fresh. Yeah, here we go, hang on. Observation of the discussion. Hey, my name is Rajesh. So, uh, so far, uh, out of eight people, six people have screwed up. And... <laughs> I am two really didn't, I guess. And uh, uh, the summary is, uh, out of this, uh, some people have missed the final details, and some people have delegated, but you know, they did not have some checkpoints in place, so the last minute they ended up in embarrassment. And the other lesson was, you know, I think you better be humble and modest. Look for blind spots, because sometimes, you know, what you think is not really what it is. And uh, not being prepared is sometimes, you know, is another embarrassment as well. And yeah, so this is the summary so of our conversation. Thank you. Cool, thank you for that. And thank you for sharing. Excuse the uh, photo interruption, but I can't help a stupid face. Anyone else? How about, yep, I'll just dash over here. Okay, uh, the general observation I've had is uh, think twice before you do anything in your production sy productive systems <laughs> <laughs> and do not pick up strangers' babies. <laughs> Somebody else? This table? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so similar theme, I think we all have screwed up, which is a good part of it. Uh, one thing was it makes for a good uh, happy hour conversation. Instead of people bragging, it makes people much more human and humane because you are more, we, we tell everyone, everyone is fallible and uh, you don't need to have a false sense of uh, uh, either bragging or, or, or too much of modesty about it. Hey, we are all together in it, and that's okay. There's nothing wrong in that. And I think uh, there was no stress on the table because everybody was kind of freely flowing with, hey, yeah, let me tell you one more where, where I made, <laughs> right, that kind of thing. So when, yeah, like that's a great observation. When you're at work, how often do you talk about screwing up? You're always <laughs> selling yourself. Does anyone else want to share another story? Or I'll run back. Yeah, last one. Yeah, from our group, uh, most of the, like the three or four of them are screwed up because they, di they didn't do the due diligence, be it like deleting the code or like uh, uh, checking in something without verifying. And uh, other thing was uh, being transparent. So while accessing like budget and all, be transparent and be vocal. And uh, one more thing that came up was uh, don't trust anybody else for your work. So he trusted his friend will uh, do the review and like do changes and went to client presentation. <laughs> But uh, he saw his own version being presented to client, and his friend was not there <laughs> that day in office. <laughs> All right. So, so what did I observe? I just wrote a few notes, um, and they'll be obvious when I say them to you. The th the fourth one might be interesting. The first one is, you know, when you're at a conference and everyone's like sitting and concentrating and looking very serious, like listening to the serious person up the front. Right? That wasn't happening at all. There was smiling, there was laughter. The other thing I noticed is that there was genuine listening, especially in that last one when it's a slightly larger group. Right? The, the noise in the first two sessions was heaps louder. Did you notice how quiet that third session was? Right? As one person's talking and seven people are listening. So that was really interesting, just watching how intently people are paying attention to the speaker. How often do you do that when you're in a work meeting? Listen carefully to what the person's saying with intent. Probably because what they're saying is selling themselves and spinning bullshit, right? rather than yeah. saying something authentic and important. Yeah. Um, and, and the last, yeah, well, that, that was my fourth point. The, you know, um, and an amplification on that fourth point was in that last conversation, it, it actually started louder and dropped off to quiet. And do you know why that might be? 
the introverts talked last, <laughs> right? So up front, the people that like always get out and start talking started talking as usual, and then as the space is empty and creates room for them, the introverts will start to talk, right? When we when we're at work meetings, do we do that? Do we make space? Get out of the microphone. Speaker range. When we're at work, do we make space for the introverts to speak, right? Or do we fill every minute with very important stuff? Yeah, cool. So that were just some observations that I had. Now, I've run this conversation a couple of times at a couple of different conferences, and I have an intent. Hello? Is that five minutes until I'm out of here? Yeah, I'm, I'm on it, right? Um, oh, you broke my rhythm. What was I saying? <laughs> just <laughs> so a couple of things that I uh, am bringing, what I want people to think about is we go out to work and we're trying to agitate for change and advocate for doing things better and all that sort of stuff. Um, when we go about trying to generate change, if we're an individual and we're pushing against the system, we've got no chance, right? But if we're a bunch of people working to the same agenda, we can make great things happen, yeah? Do you agree? No. Let the records state, Mr. Cameraman, that no one in the room agree. <laughs> ah, come on. So, so when we're working as a group, when we're working as a team, when we're all enlisted in the same idea together, we can get change to happen, right? How often do we stand there alone, frustrated, or maybe with a workmate and like express our frustrations and you know, complaints about why things are never gonna change, right? Having authentic conversations in small groups, enlisting people in change, turning those small groups into big groups, right? That's a pathway to making organizations change. We've had people from IBM and Infosys and people like that come and talk at this conference. I work in an organization that's got 150 people in the product and software development space, right? So I can walk around and have individual conversations with every single person. But when you're doing things at scale, and even 150 people or even 50 people, when you're trying to get people to kind of turn around and do things differently, it's really, really hard. But together we can do it, right? And one last point on that is rather than you knowing best and going telling everyone else what they need to be doing, talking to each other and listening to each other and finding solutions together is the way that we make forward progress, right? Because, you know, that's what we did today. So different to a normal work meeting. Cool. Look, thanks. And just in my last two minutes, right, if you can just grab your original pair, because it's not over yet. Last time I did this, by the way, I asked the four most embarrassing stories to come up the room and tell everyone, but I'm not going to do that. What I'd like you to do is just take the last two minutes. Have I got two minutes, Mr. Timekeeper? Beauty is to just go back to your original pair and say to them one thing out of this session or out of this conference that I've learned so far that I might be able to take to work and do something about, yeah? And then this session is over, there are the doors. I hope you have a lovely afternoon. Thanks very much. <laughs>